Matthew Pantelis. 26 minutes to 11 o'clock on 5AA. Today's the 1st of July 2020 and it is mining month. How about that? The month of mining. South Australia is a great resource for mining. Let's find out where we're at with all of that. Paul Heather Say is CEO of the Department for Energy and Mining and is uh, on the line at the moment. Paul, good morning. Thanks for your time. Hello. Hello. Yes, can Hello. you hear me? Yes, can you hear me, Matthew? Yes, I can, Paul. Good morning to you. Yeah, and good morning to along. you. Now, yeah. tell me about uh, mining and where we're at at the moment. I see there's been a lot going on in terms of conferences uh, in Adelaide. How's the sector going? Look, the sector is, uh, like most business sectors, uh, were, was affected by the COVID, uh, COVID issues and uh, uh, commodity prices uh, took, took a plunge uh, through, through all that. But the industry came together ex extraordinarily well um, and worked out ways of uh, dealing with FIFO workers who were coming across the borders, worked out how to deal with their supply chains, which were disrupted by this, and largely have sort of kept on going and uh, they haven't really missed a beat. So they've done really well and in the long term looks really good, particularly for uh, metals that are involved in, in renewable energy and the sort of new, new, the new economy. And most of those metals we have in South Australia. What's the extent that mining influences the state economy? How much of what is, you know, mined essentially ends up in government coffers in taxpayers' hands? The, we, the, well, the way it works is that uh, companies uh, take out a mining lease and they pay royalties to the government, and the royalties uh, at the moment are around $370 million a year, uh, and that, uh, that, 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 that money just keeps rolling in because mines tend to be very long-lived long Propositions, and of course, they they employ uh, you know the, currently the, the mining sector in the broad uh, uh, employs about forty thousand people in South Australia through both direct mining and through the services it provides. So it's a major flywheel for the economy. In other words, it's going to keep on going because we're so prospective with respect to metals like copper and uranium and iron ore and uh, cobalt and nickel. Co copper's the one that's really sought after, isn't it, at the moment, because of the, the big boost in electric cars and batteries uh, to store power in, etc. That's what we really want, is that right? That's correct. Um, you know, a normal uh, EV vehicle takes three times the amount of copper than a normal uh, vehicle does. And and you think about the internet, and, you know, we're going to be very reliant on the internet uh, a lot more in the future. That uses a lot of copper wire, and there's no real substitute for copper. Um, and the challenge we have worldwide is that we have to find as much copper in the next 25 years as we found in human history, and happily South Australia will be, uh, you know, right in the middle of all of that. So, uh, obviously, I know Roxby Downs, one of the big sources of, of copper there, along with gold and uranium. Um, are we getting it from anywhere else, or are we pinning our hopes on that? No, well, I mean, well Roxby Downs and Olympic Dam is the third largest uh, copper deposit in the world. And it's going to, if they were mining, if they continued mining at the same rate, they'd still be, here, be there in 100 years' time. That's how, that's how incredible it is. But happily, in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, the scientists have worked out how to find more of them. So Prominent Hill, uh, Carapatina, um, uh, and the, the, there's a number of deposits around the Carapatina area. They're all uh, are the same class as Olympic Dam, and we're very confident that in the future a lot more are going to be found and most recently BHP announced a new discovery called Oak Dam West um, which is uh, a, a, some just south of uh, Olympic Dam, standalone new deposit um, and the early, the early signs of that are very, very positive as well. I don't know um, how copper works but I know from a tour of the old Munta mine through there they were talking, the tour guide was talking about how the reef there is connected to the big discovery uh, a few years before Munta I think at Burra mm. which yeah. is all part of the same reef so obviously these things extend for, for hundreds of kilometres. They do, and uh, I mean, you know, and so, as you mentioned, Burra and uh, Wallaroo and, uh, the, and the, the early, start, you know, the early part of the Adelaide settlement was not really underpinned by copper, yes. and it really hasn't hasn't changed. So now we've got this gigantic resource in the north, and a number of others being found, 
um, and, and uh, that will continue on into the future. That is good news. Now, mm. I know there's a core innovation hub. I saw a release come through on this. Not sure exactly what that is or how it works, but obviously yeah. this is to help what uh, mining the mining companies that want to start up, or is it offshoots uh, people wanting to, to get their own little uh, startup going as a result of uh, mining? How does yeah. that work? Well, it's a it's a it's a it's a, a concept that started in the West about four years ago, and the idea is to bring in innovators, entrepreneurs, uh, to apply their talents to the mining the mining and energy sectors. Um, uh, the, you know, mining mining and processing these days, a lot of it gets outsourced to service companies who are very you know specialised in certain areas, and there's lots of problems to be solved. Uh, you know, uh, how do we how do we find all bodies uh, faster than we do? How do we process them in, in, in a cheaper and more energy efficient way? Um, there's lots of issues to be solved, and it really is open for the entrepreneurial class to uh, to be involved. And so, the core energy, core, core innovation hub is designed to bring those people together, uh, make people aware of the of the, the you know the challenges that are out there and the opportunities. And then help um, uh, you know uh, fledgling companies uh, get introduced to the, the bigger companies, the big the big customers, and uh, make a go of it. So it's a very exciting um, and proven uh, 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 organisation that we've managed to attract to Adelaide. Okay. And just looking through your website, I see you, you mentioned BHP searching and making discoveries in other companies too around the state. There is an Explore SA challenge uh, underway at the moment. What's that about? That's correct. Well, we've. What's happened? What happens in in South Australia and many other jurisdictions is that we're the regulator, and part of the regulation is that companies have to, when they've done their work, they give their data and their and their core material to us to to look after and curate. So we have an enormous database in South Australia of of, of South Australian geology, and uh, we decided uh, that uh, we should open that up uh, to. People are not not traditionally in the mining sector and see what they can what they can do with the data. So uh, we've created this challenge where people have got to come in and look at the data, clean it up, and then start to present uh, to, to 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 be awarded uh, present targets that we potentially could be drilling in the future. Okay, and how successful is that proving so far? Oh, we, we, over you know massive oversubscription. Um, we announced some winners the other day for the for the first stages of, of this of this competition in terms of cleaning up the data, which is a, always a major part of any big data exercise. And we're attracting you know companies and, and people that have never been in the mining sector before, but they've got machine learning or big data science skills, and they're applying it to our data. So it's a great uh, it's a great win win, and because it's a government um, competition that you know the results are that become public and are very transparent so everybody learns by uh, what happens are we doing enough here locally paul in terms of uh skilling people up or either at uni or uh, more physical hands-on mechanical type skills that are needed in this sector to really capitalize on what's going on in sa well i think uh what's the COVID uh crisis has shown us that um, and, and the companies are reacting to this. The, the FIFO model uh, has worked very well for Australia, but it, you know you have a, a, a shop like this, and all of a sudden that doesn't work for you anymore. So there's quite a lot of um, interest from uh, from the major companies now to to relook at our training programs to make to see if we can't uh, develop some of the specialised skills that they need, particularly in health and safety. Uh, one example is some of the the jumbo, the, 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 the jumbo drivers, which are the, the big drill rigs that they use underground at Olympic Dam, they come from uh, Tasmania, they fly flying from Tasmania. So you would think, well, clearly there's a way of, we can train people up to do that. We don't have to uh, do the fly in, fly out anymore. So there's quite a uh, quite a bit deal of activity to re recast what Good. we do to attract the right people. We also have a, an organis organisation called uh, the Resources uh, and Energy Skills Alliance, and they... Uh, monitor activity. They they have a website called Hot Rubble. So if somebody wants to become to enter the mining industry, this is a very easy way of uh, working out how to get into it, which is oftentimes a barrier to people. I remember a few years ago. Now you talk about uh, geo things that um, mm. there was a suggestion of mining down to hot rocks, a geothermal approach yeah. to generate energy. 
That's um, correct. Is that still underway? Have we got anywhere with that? It seemed to be a, a long distance type project uh, back yeah, in the five or so it, years it, ago. That's right, it, and I, I think it, it, it's it's subdued now. Uh, there was a lot of uh, investment uh, interest at the time, um, but the resource hasn't gone away. And I think the, the lessons learned from that initial phase will be re re-examined, and it'll come back in the future because, as I say, it's a, it's an energy source which we haven't tapped. I think the the problems uh, that they encountered were some technical problems with drilling at great depths and uh, and also being a long way away from the grid. So the idea would be to have you know hot rocks. Uh, 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 process, you know, very close to the the national energy market grid, and then you can make a case for it. But uh, it didn't happen that time. But it, like a lot of these things, people go away, they learn, they come back, and we'll have another crack at it in the future, I'm sure. Indeed. Hey, Peter has just texted in. He says, "What we're taking out of the ground here, how much of it is processed in SA, or do we just export it?" No, well, Olympic Dam, all of it's processed, for example, and the reason why is because. Olympic Dam is a sort of multi-commodity ore body, so it's got copper, gold, uranium uh, and other metals. Um, it makes sense there to process it right through the copper metal and to extract all the other metals. Uh, some of the other mines um, are only produce to a concentrate level, so they get to a point where they, uh, it's still uh, it's, it's crushed and, uh, and sent overseas to specialist plants, which are of a difference, you know, are, are very, very big. So there's an economy of scale that comes into it. But um, uh, we are constantly looking at ways of improving the value of our commodities so that we retain more value here. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's the way to do it. More jobs as well. I, I went on a tour of Olympic Dam two or three years ago just on the surface, but they were telling me there's, and you might know the figure, but apparently hundreds of kilometres of road underground, which yeah. just blew me away. Yeah, no, it's an extraordinary thing. We, you know, we, 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 can, you know, it's hard to uh, to really appreciate the size and scale of Olympic Dam. I think there's something in the order of well over 300 kilometres wow. of underground uh, road, uh, in, and that's just in one tiny part of the ore body. I mean, the ore body is uh, is is just gigantic, and the and and BHP are working through uh, their preparation of their EIS for the next expansion, which will take them in the vicinity. They produce about 200,000 tonnes of copper per annum now. Uh, the next expansion will take them somewhere between 300 and 350, and then there are plans for even bigger uh, bigger tonnages later on. So, and it's, it, it, the, you know, the ore body is so big, and it's very high grade too. That's so, it's very competitive with other mines around the world, where the average grade around the world right now is about 0.5% uh, copper, and they routinely uh, mine one and a half to two percent copper at Olympic Dam. That's great. Do you think we'll ever see their plans for that massive expansion that they had to call off uh, ever happen in the future? Well, I think it's it's what's going to happen is, uh, is, is is similar to what's happened in the in the Pilbara in Western Australia. That rather than the, the sort of the big bang, which is what we went went they were going for in 2011, this is a more incremental growth, but it's going to be. So it's a series of stages, but uh, already the first stage they're talking about now is a 50% increase in what they're doing. So that's that's very very significant, and uh, and I think uh, I think uh, you know learning by doing, doing the first stage, uh, you know paying back capital in a more you know so it's a much more conservative way of doing it. But I think we will end up in the same place in in years to come. Okay, let's hope so. All right, Paul, appreciate your time and uh, information this morning. Enjoy your month, mining month, in SA. Thanks very much, Matthew. Paul Heather, say there, CEO of the Department of uh, Energy and Mining here in South Australia.